Welcome back, part two of our Tegu Brumation Guide, answering your questions. Thank you so much for all your great questions. Mm -hmm. Today, we're gonna be covering feeding, that's a big one, as well as care for during brumation, during brumation and, and after. after brumation. Yeah. So, let's jump right into your questions. Let's go. Okay, Danielle asked, I did try cutting light hours and turning down her temps, but that ended with her being constipated. So I boosted the temps again. Is this something that happens? Is there a way around it? Or am I approaching this wrong and should just let her decide if she wants to brew it? Okay, so that is something that happens if you continue feeding after you start cutting your light schedule back. Okay, so it's very important for everyone to remember, once you start cutting your lights back, you stop feeding all completely. That is probably the most important thing when it comes to brumating your tegus. They cannot digest their food properly without that heat, okay? So that is why the tegu is getting constipated because it can't properly digest that food completely when the lights are being cut back. So a lot of people worry about mm -hmm. their, their animal not eating. You know, they're worried about that, but they were built for this. They can go six months easy without food if things are set up correctly for them and if they're brumated correctly. So just remember that when you start cutting your light schedule down, you completely stop feeding. You can still offer them water, keep fresh water in there, but no more food. Okay, sounds good. William asked, should I feed my tegus because mine are skinny? So there's a difference between like a skinny tegu and an emaciated tegu. Like a thin tegu, I would even think. You, know, you, know, like you guys know how when tegus eat, their sides get all plump and full. And then usually like if they go several days without eating, their sides are all Thin. So I'm assuming that's what he's talking about, his tegu skinny. You want your tegu to be empty, kind of empty from food. You don't want any food in their system when they're going into brumation because remember, they need that heat as a cold-blooded animal. They need that heat to digest food. So what would you say they're looking at that looks like too skinny? Like I mean, if you see bones protruding, then you need to take yeah. your animal to a vet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So if your tegu's emaciated, go see a vet. <laughs> Okay, so Metal Mama asked, I know it's important not to feed them before they brumate, but my question is, how do you know they are about to brumate so you don't feed them? Or do they just refuse the food? Or do you have to make sure to keep them awake a certain amount of time after they last ate? I just don't know when they're about to brumate, so when to stop feeding them. Okay, so in this situation, I know Metal Mama, I know she has two young blue tegus. So what I would recommend in this situation to other people with young tegus, like I said earlier, young tegus, they kind of go in and out. Sometimes they slow down. Sometimes they go to sleep for a few nights, come up. I recommend just leaving the lights on and you continue to feed them. So if they're wanting to eat, okay? So just keep your lights on and continue to feed. And what that will do is it will warm up the enclosure. If they need to bask, they're going to. But even on the cool side with the lights on, it's gonna be like 80 degrees. That's still enough heat to help them digest that food. They're not gonna die from eating and then in an enclosure with the lights on. So that's what I would recommend. Now, if you have a baby who just is brumating and is like Burrowed, down for a couple weeks, you haven't seen them, you can turn the lights off and stop feeding in that situation. But if you're like, I don't know, they're still active, they're still eating, then just continue it on as normal don't worry if you don't see them for a day or two at a time. All of that's normal. All right. Okay. So Jack asked, I have a large female I bought this October. She seemed like she was trying to brewmate, would not take any food and still won't. But she's even more sluggish now and she definitely is starting to look skinny. Is that normal? It depends. Um, so skinny is a very variable word. Yeah. You know, if she's looking emaciated and like bones are coming out of her tail or you can see her hip bones or her spine, that is absolutely not normal. Needs a vet ASAP. Um, but a tegu slowing down in October, especially after going to a new home, sounds completely normal. So what I would do if this was my animal is I would listen to what she's trying to tell me. And it seems like she wants to slow down so make sure she has a nice, dark, cool place to brumate, and that's it. But now, again, if you're if this tegu is looking emaciated, go see a vet. There we go. 
My one and a half year old hasn't pooped in almost a month. She gets up every day to eat and bask for an hour and then goes back to bed. I'm afraid she won't poop if I turn her heat down to brewmate, but she seems ready to brewmate since she's sleeping so much. Since she's still eating, I feed her every other day. Should I stop feeding her and cool down her house or just keep things as they are? Um, and then it has stuff. Also, any tips to help get her to poop? Okay, so to me, it kind of sounds like your tegu most likely is still pooping because a month of not pooping and really the fact time. that it still has an appetite and it's eating every other day mm -hmm. just doesn't quite make sense to me. But I will give you guys some tips on if you have a constipated tegu, I have three things that you can do to help relieve that. Okay, so tip number one. First of all, if your tegu is constipated, that is a serious health concern and you need to get that animal into a vet. So the first tip I'm gonna have is hydration. Fresh water in the enclosure at all times is very important for your tegu. Proper humidity is also important for their hydration. You can soak that animal, which is what I would recommend doing for an animal who's constipated. You wanna get them into some warm water and have them soak. And then tip number two is you can also feed some foods that help them pass their stool, such as prunes mm -hmm. and papaya. papaya. Mm -hmm. And there's probably some more things you can Google search that will, that tegus eat that help them have loose stools and pass that a little easier. The third tip, this is a weird one. I've actually never done it, but I know people who have done it. And that is using a vibrator and you um, put that on their stomach and you use like a medical wrap, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. Like a medical yeah. wrap. Yeah. What's that called? It's called a wrap, like a compression wrap. Yeah, and you use like a compression wrap to attach that vibrator to their stomach and you turn that on. And what that vibrating does is it can help break up um, what's blocking them up. And I've seen vets do that. I've seen a lot of people do that with success. So, well, there you go. <laughs> so all right, so that's three quick tips if your tegu is constipated. All right, so that kind of wraps up the feeding category. So we're gonna move into our next category, which is care during brumation and after brumation. Okay. All right. So the question that we got the most, I will put them up here, <laughs> is pretty much how often should you check on your tegus during brumation? Okay. So how often you check on your tegus is kind of gonna depend a little bit on you and how comfortable you are with brumating your tegus. I know at the beginning, yeah, I used to check weird. on them all the time. Like, I mean, uh -huh. I say all the time, probably once a week. Yeah. Um, and now I check on them about once a month. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but it is important that we are checking on our tegus during brumation um, because they can develop some respiratory problems while they're brumating and you want to be on top of that. So, so what should they look for? Like if they're, yes. what should they like for respiratory problems. So what you want to look for is, it, first of all, tegus don't want to be checked on while they're brumating. <laughs> Anytime their bodies are cooled down like that, they're going to be very defensive because they don't have the energy to fight back a predator. So what you're going to hear them do when you touch them when they're brumating is they're going to let out a big hiss. They're going to just mm -hmm, I've heard And that. when you hear that, if that sounds like, like they're gurgling, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, any gurgling sounds while they're hissing at you, that is a sign that they have a respiratory infection. If that happens, you do want to start slowly warming that animal up and you would put them in their enclosure and then let them get adjusted to the room temperature, you know, 70 or 75 before you start turning on temperatures. You know, you can spend 24 to 48 hours getting them warmed back up and taking them out of brumation if you heard that. And then also getting in touch with a vet immediately. But yeah, so it kind of depends. Some of it depends on their own personal anxiety levels. Of the owner. Yeah. <laughs> not, not the digging, but the owner. Uh-huh. Um, we do it once a month. Yeah, so that's what I kind of recommend. But, you know, it fluctuates a little bit. But I do recommend checking on them about once a month just to do a just quick Check examination in. yeah make sure they're breathing well okay all right so the next question we have a guest here michelle <laughs> she's waiting for us to come cut up some oranges yep <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh teresa asks do you put water in there with them 
Okay, so I, I've thought about that. at the beginning when I first started this, I wanted water in there with them, but uh, it's just not a good idea because what they'll spill it, and you do not want anything wet um, where they're brumating. Yeah, at. and with that strong. Yeah, you hay don't stuff, want that. So moldy. no water in there with them at all. Okay. Now, when I used to check on them mm -hmm. every once in a while, I would. I used to do this, you know once a month or so, whenever I would check on them, I would soak them as well and let them drink. Now, about, I believe, two years now, I've gone through two brumation seasons where I don't give them any water at all until I wake them up. That's one of the first things I do. Okay, so the next one is kind of a few different questions, um, but people were asking um, kind of two parts to this. Do they lose weight during brumation? Do they still grow during brumation? Okay, um, I do not believe that they grow. I haven't had any that grow during that brumation. We tell. How much is normal, like if they lose weight? I'm not sure how much is normal for them to lose. I will say, you know, I've each year I tell myself, oh, I want to weigh everybody and then weigh them again when they come out of brumation. But yeah, then that see. time of the year when we're putting animals in brumation is always so busy that I don't get around to weighing everyone. But I'm going to do that soon. So maybe next year, next year we'll I'll have it. the answer for we that should, question. That should be a video. Yeah, how much? Like a video. No, that would be cool. I've, I've wondered that myself and I just haven't done the testing. Ding, video idea. Because okay. putting them in brumation and <laughs> taking them out, that's always a really big busy time <laughs> okay so we had a few questions about when do you bring them back outside okay so for me you know I keep mine outside mm -hmm. and so what I I got to work with the weather so I don't have an exact it varies, day yeah. it varies every year it, by it can vary up to a month so I want to get them out there as soon as possible but I also want to avoid bringing them out and then having to bring them back in which, yeah sometimes we have crazy happens. Oh, that happens almost Texas every weather. year. Um, so the, this last year, I moved them out later than I ever had, and they actually bred faster than they ever have. Yeah. So um, what I like, I like the, the lows at night to be for sure in the 50s yeah. before I bring them out. So once the lows in we're the kinda, 50s yeah, we're consistently... Looking at the temperature, we're looking at the, the forecast, like, you know, as far in advance it can go if we don't see any... Yeah, you just got to look at like. your weather, and once I'm in the 50s, then that's whenever I'm either going to move them out or really close to moving them out. Yeah, for so, us, that's usually like March, but everybody yeah. can be different. I try to, it's usually March, but sometimes close, pretty close to April, yeah. for sure the end of March. Yeah. End of March or beginning of April is when I move them outside in East Texas, but depending on your location, <laughs> that's going to differ. Now, for people who keep them inside, the question would be, how do you know when to turn the lights back on? Right. Well, the take is going to let you know, just like they let me know. They start scratching in their, their tubs. If you keep them in a tub, if you keep them in their enclosure, they're going to just Come emerge up. and they're going to be laying where their light is. Even if it's off, they're just going to go there. You know, and once they start coming out and wanting to bask consistently, well, you introduce food and your lights the same way you took them away. Okay. But in reverse. You start turning your lights back on, and then once your lights are fully on, okay, that's when we start feeding. Okay, so we started food, like, right when we started doing the, so the food's, like, on the ends, right? So, like, mm -hmm. you took away food right yeah. when you started turning the lights off, and you don't give food until the lights are fully back up. Yep, okay. that's correct. All right. Jaylee asks, does their temperament change much for handling after not being handled for a while? Okay, so we get this question so much. Yeah. And, okay, so does their temperament change? I would say a little. <laughs> um, it it kind of depends a little bit on the animal and on some other things. But one thing to keep in mind, a lot of people think that their temperament changed a lot more than it actually did. Because when, they, when their animal wakes up from brumation, they want to start handling it makes sense but if that animal is cool then it's it naturally shows some defensive behaviors okay because their body temperature is cool anytime a tegu is cool they can be defensive okay 
So you have to keep that in mind. And then what happens right after brumation, once they fully wake up, now, now they're in feeding mode. Yeah. Okay. Now they're in feeding mode and you can sometimes see some behavior related to that. So what you have to keep in mind with tegus is that they're very seasonal, especially for people who are breeding their tegus, keeping them outdoors. You're going to see their behavior change a lot throughout yeah, the scary. season. There's times of the year where I can go in and snuggle every single one of them. And then there's times of the year where the males are defending their area. Females are defending their nest location. They become territorial. There's just a lot of behavior, yeah. seasonal behavior when it comes to tegus. Okay. So Jaylee also asked, what's one thing you wish someone had told you about brumation before you experienced it for the first time? Okay. That's a good question. <laughs> So one thing I wish I would have known about brumation before going into it, um, you know, I did a ton of research on brumation. It was something that mm -hmm. kind of worried me when going into tegus, yes. but it's also the reason I got into tegus is because of how well their brumation schedule worked with how I wanted to keep them. But one thing I wish I knew um, is how much I would learn from them. You know, a lot of this information I'm giving you guys in these videos about in this brumation guide is information I learned from watching the tegus, just observing them, setting them up correctly and just observing them, seeing how they respond to the weather and everything. So a lot of what I know about brumation was taught to me by my tegus. So and that journey has been really fun, but it was super stressful going yeah. through brumation every year. It was really stressful on me. Um, but so if I could go back, I wish someone would have told me just enjoy it. Enjoy observing the animals. Enjoy the things that they're going to teach you. So that's, good. that's what I would say. Awesome. Thank you guys for watching part two of our Tegu Brumation Guide. If you have any other questions, drop them down below. And also we're having a 10 day sale. Yes. There's eight days left or seven days seven left days. right now I mean when you're viewing this so visit our website link in the description huge sale on tegus thank you for watching i'll see you guys in the next one bye, bye. welcome back <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> i had a weird face i was like mm. yeah like way too excited <laughs> betty bought a bit of butter betty baked a bunch of biscuits betty bought a bit of butter betty baked a bunch of biscuits but she found the butter bitter betty butt cheeks were <laughs> welcome back to part two of wait what is this series <laughs> and in today's video we're going to be covering heat and care no. for part two of our brumation guide video series thing welcome back to part two of our brumation guide for tegus <laughs> hang on i got it just okay, hang on I stop breaking this get it together because i have to hurry up and get back into it Stop!